trigger happy and I give less than a fuck. Love me or hate me, I'ma show no rip shit up. It's Mr. Nothing, nice on a mic stand. Mike in the left and the zest in my right hand. I took a puff, had enough now, hold up. If that was in dope, niggas getting rolled up. Yo what's, what's good, folks? This is Ass Roots. So I'm gonna review Eminem's actual debut album, Infinite. So this album was produced throughout 1996 and was kind of around the time when Tupac and Biggie were still kind of in the picture, but Eminem was on his come up and trying to get things started in Detroit and had, you know, a few members of D12 back in the swing back in these days, but a lot of this album is very sleepy and there's a lot towards this project that I'm going to talk about here, but I definitely want to say it reminds me in a lot of ways of the Slim Shady EP, just less pronounced than that. I mean, at least on the Slim Shady EP, Eminem kind of came off as like a potential firecracker, someone who had a lot of spark that was getting ready to happen and had the personality mapped out. But on this album, Infinite is basically just Eminem the lyricist, and it's kind of a very basic, where he does have lyrics that remind me a lot of Slim Shady, the concept behind it is it lacks like personality. It's kind of like when you have like, it's it, to me, a lot of this album is just kind of like a drawing board and a sketchbook and this kind of more of like a prototype of what Eminem himself was actually going to go on to be where these songs, while they're decent, they don't have a lot of distinction and they kind of feel somewhat aimless, especially for Eminem, considering that he is quite a solid songwriter, but really... About the only real thing that Eminem has going on this project is just his lyrics. If you are like an absolute addict to the Slim Shady style that he had on the Slim Shady EP and LP in 97 and 99, that's about the, the only thing this project really has going for it. And it's just kind of the concept. A lot of the production on here is just very kind of drowsy and not anything noteworthy or anything that has any sort of spark towards it to really have any sort of motivation. There's no club joints. It doesn't appear like Eminem really goes out and has much. It just feels like a very... Like, for the most part, it's even difficult to figure out where a lot of these songs would even be played. Because for the most part, it kind of feels like maybe Eminem's just cruising around. Most of this just kind of feels like New York, kind of Wu-Tang and Nas wannabe and AZ wannabe type music that is mostly just... I, I'm getting off work and I'm in a good mood that I don't have to work kind of angle. It's just mostly blue collar, East Coast rap obsessed kind of music. You know, if you had a job back in 1995 and 1997, but you were like really obsessed with Wu-Tang Clan and Nas and Biggie, that's kind of the music that you would listen to here. None of it really has like a total spark towards it. And it's not to say like, East Coast rap music has bad production, but I really feel like Eminem was truly aiming for, like, trying to be... Eminem was really trying to be more of, like, a... Um, like a, a true kind of East Coast lyricist in this sort of concept. It wasn't like you would never realize that just three years later he would go on to collaborate with Dr. Dre all the time. It felt like with this album and the Slim Shady EP, he wasn't even in Dr. Dre's catalog or anything like that. No Snoop Dogg influence, no Dr. Dre influence, not much of a Tupac influence, and not much of like Too Short or E-40, those type folks, Ice Cube even. I mean, it really feels like... Like Eminem probably thought that he was going to be probably collaborating with more folks like Nas. And that's kind of the thing. It's not to say it's bad, but I mean, the production is bad. I mean, I like, there's like certain beats I like on the Slim Shady EP that just kind of have like a real, like I said, drowsy and kind of, you know, had like five or six beers kind of vibe about them towards it. But the production, Mr. Porter from D12 produced this project. And even he in his early days was not a very effective musician at this stage. Not to say that it's unlistenable, but for the most part, I feel like the stuff that Mr. Porter produced... I feel like the stuff Mr. P Porter produced on the Slim Shady EP was just leagues better. There's just way too many situations. Like most of this, like I said, it's an awkward listen as far as trying to figure out where you would listen to this and what sort of situation, why you would listen to this and what, I mean, because none of this has any sort of motivation or move liveliness. I mean, this is really not a lively album whatsoever. I think drowsy is one of the most popular words I can use to describe this project because for the most part, Eminem is just trying to make 
take it, get into music, and figure it out from there. But apart from showcasing his lyricism, there's not really much to digest. I mean, really, it's just, to me, this, like I said, blue collar, just got off of work, car music, and that's just mostly it. I gotta make it, and if I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do type thing. And, um... So, to talk about the single, I mean, Infinite kind of had probably one of the better, the title track, Infinite, had one of the better produced on here. It just kind of reminded me, like, the bells that were kind of slinking in the song reminded me of something you'd kind of hear in, like, mid-late November. It felt kind of like holiday music, except in a rap version of that. For some reason, that's kind of what I got. It felt like more like a winter song to me, which is interesting because rap songs don't typically have that, but I kind of felt like that's a nice kind of winter and and i like the beat on the hook and in infinite also just kind of felt like something off the slim shady ep but of course eminem really obliterated the song i mean he did great on there i mean the lyrics were fine and this really is quite the stark production that this makes it this you know pretty tough to digest and such but it did feel like one of the few winter type songs i felt like and um like, really, I, I, it's very tough to find anything distinct about this project. I pretty much would probably never listen to most of this, even once or twice a year, and, and under almost any circumstance for most of these songs. But there were at least two other songs out of ten on here that I would recommend to you, apart from the title track, Infinite, and that those would be Tonight and then Search In. So Search In had Mr. Porter on here, and he lays a verse doesn't even hardly sound like Mr. Porter. I mean, I barely recognized him on the song. And then there's like this chick on here called Angela Workman who drops a pretty good hook. I mean, it felt like something. It didn't feel like much. I mean, it felt like a good hook, but you could tell that it was kind of unsigned in that sort of territory. Not so much on her part that it felt unsigned, but just the quality of the song. It felt like, hey, this is kind of like an R&B, kind of juicy and one more chance kind of wannabe. I definitely got that kind of vibe that Eminem was aiming for, like what Biggie was doing with Ready to Die and stuff. And that's pretty good. I mean, Angela Workman did a great job, but it's just kind of... Like, once again, Searchin' and Tonight, I'm not saying they have outstanding production, but they're probably, in my opinion, the most listenable. Like, a vibe that I get from those three songs, Infinite, Tonight, and Searching, is just kind of, like, typically, like, the sort of stuff that you heard from Biggie. I, I really feel like songs like Juicy and One More Chance Remix without the good beat of One More Chance Remix, but just those type of songs. Songs like Juicy and Big Papa, something that Puff Daddy and them would have produced back in 1993. That's kind of what this album is. It's just kind of a white version of like what Biggie was doing back in 1994. And it's not to say... I mean, I respect Eminem's talent on the mic as far as being able to do it, but it's I'm so glad that like Dr. Dre found him and I'm also glad that he created the Slim Shady character because I definitely would have said, I mean, Eminem was a pretty plain musician. He did have things to say, but his his wisecracks in those type moments were just not quite as poignant when he wasn't Slim Shady. It just kind of felt like he might have gotten pissed off, but most people kind of get pissed off having a bad job and being broke and on minimum wage and that type of stuff. So this is kind of, you look at that sort of concept, I feel like Slim Shady was the perfect character made for like the concept of what Eminem went through in the mid to late 90s. And then Dr. Dre helped him even further when he started kicking off his album. So this is kind of the situation. But yeah, it just was the perfect combination to get Eminem in tow because before that point, he was just like a Biggie knockoff, a Nas knockoff and like a Wu-Tang knockoff and that type of stuff. So it was just, eh, you know, I mean, I respect it. I, you have to have some degree of respect for this project just because this was Eminem's kickoff point. And it was basically like his demo tape, the initial project to show what he would become. But it's just kind of, uh, I'm glad that he found himself as like the music went along. So that's definitely like the good point. So I'm going to give this album me liking three songs out of ten i'm gonna give it like a two and a half out of ten i i could give it a three but that would give it too much like i i feel like a three would give it too much pungentness to say that it was almost good and this album really is not pushing toward like there are many other rap albums that have so much more to offer than this project and um 
I mean, I, I feel like Eminem's lyricism is something to be noted, but it it's not anywhere near a classic album. It just mostly it's the debut project of a musician that would go on to be a gargantuan musician, but when he started off, and you know, you can say this about people if you want to have like a toolkit here. When he started off, there was a lot to be desired, and, and it's like you know, it doesn't bother me that Eminem was not gargantuan right out the gate, but just to kind of say this is not something where people can say, oh, this was a classic, and this was, I mean, especially from a production head. I mean, if you dislike lyricism, I can see some folks saying, oh, this is quality, but eh, you know. I feel like even Biggie back in like the Ready to Die days, which came out two years before this, had an ear for production, at least in some cases. Like songs like Juicy, songs like uh, like Machine Gun Funk, and songs like Big Papa had way better production than basically anything on here. So I don't know. I mean, Mr. Porter had the right idea, but it was just very undercooked. And that's kind of the situation. So the social score, I'm not going to really score it. It's because Infinite, you know, it was said that these were only just cassette copies of this album that were made in the first place. So it was probably just not even a single that was released. Eminem just said, hey, people like this song. I'm going to perform it. And that's how it went. But I did like Infinite, the title track. So... That's kind of the concept there. I need to get to reviewing more Eminem. I'm going to review Encore and Music to be Murdered by Side B soon enough, and then that'll basically wrap up Eminem's catalog. But I definitely felt like I wanted to get this one done. So yeah, you have another project by Eminem, and this is what I thought, 2.5 out of 10.